Hey everybody, Will here, and today I've got my long overdue GoPro Hero 4 aftermarket battery test. You may recall last year I did such a test for the GH4, and uh, basically this was a really interesting test for me to do because I have always been a fan of aftermarket batteries. They're about a quarter of the price of the genuine batteries, and while they don't quite perform as well, um, they seem to be definitely worth the money for just about every aftermarket battery I've purchased. So I was really interested to find out exactly what sort of performance I was losing when I'm saving as much money as I am on these things. And so basically I did a big test and tested uh, two of each battery of as many batteries as I can find for the GH4 and found out that on general, the aftermarket batteries have at max 88% capacity of the genuine batteries and all the way down to 48% for some of the worst performing ones. Wasabi Power was there at the top as one of the top ranking ones. DTSE was there at the bottom. And so that's a bit disappointing, but even at 48% power, you're paying a quarter of the price of the genuine batteries. So depending on your workflow, um, you, and you can't get anything but the DTSE, which has 48%, that can still be a good deal for some people. So I was glad I did the test, and also the goal was hopefully with this test too, to figure out, okay, Wasabi Power is gonna be a reliable battery um, to get from now on, because obviously I can't do this test for every single camera that I buy. But um, hopefully I wanted to find a pattern here. So uh, I've done the exact same thing here for the GoPro Hero 4, much more so though, because it's a much more popular camera and there's a lot more options. I've just got a ton of aftermarket batteries. Once again, I'm doing two of each. The first one only has one or two power cycles on it. This, uh, the second battery for each of this test is gonna be used probably about five or six times prior to, to actually doing the test. Just really quickly to mention the specs of the test, it is 4K, 30 frames per second with Protune on that I am shooting this test in. And to go through the battery brands that I have for the test, we have GoPro, of course, the GoPro, genuine GoPro battery here at the top, followed by Wasabi Power, the winner from the GH4 test. Numoa is going to be the next up on the GH4 test, followed by DTSE, which was the worst performing battery for the GH4 test. Vivitar is a company that makes general photo accessories. I've had quite a few batteries from them. And they seemed okay to me. DBK, a company I've never heard of. Fotiv, another general photo accessory company. Power 2000, I've seen a lot of those batteries on um, kind of older cameras too. That seems to be the one that's just like usually the cheapest. Also, it's a very, very bad sign when I went on Google Images to try to find their logo to use for this test and couldn't find it and had to make it myself. So I don't have high hopes for Power 2000. Effortech is another company I've never heard of. And finally, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, maybe Symmetry is what they're going for, I don't know. That is an aftermarket GoPro company. They just do GoPro accessories. So you're not gonna find them from anyone else, but I wanted to include them for this test. So uh, those are the contestants for this test, and why don't we go ahead and get it started. Here we go. You may notice a little bit of a flicker there. That is my equipment, my monitor, not the camera in any way. Um, VLC was what I used for this. Not sure why that happened. But as we go on through here, let's see who goes out first. And new MOA, surprisingly, at 57 minutes. That was one of the better batteries in the GH4 test, followed by DTSE. Um, that makes more sense. Followed by Wasabi. That is a surprise and a very disappointing thing to have happen for this test. There goes Effortech at about one hour and one minute. Followed by Fotiv. Power 2000, not doing that bad at all. The color coding here, by the way, is for the average of the two batteries. Symmetry, or SMA tree, is at one hour and three minutes. Next up is Vivitar. And the winner for the aftermarket test looks like it's DBK at... One hour and seven minutes. And let's just see how long the genuine GoPro battery lasts. One hour and nine minutes. So obviously that spread is a bit tighter than it was with the GH4. That camera had about a three hour battery life, whereas the GoPro has a pathetic one hour battery life. But that is actually pretty good for the uh, aftermarket batteries compared to the GH4 test. Last time, again, uh, GH4, the top performer was 88% of the original uh, battery's capacity. Here it is 
um, and that only goes down to 83%, whereas the, Go or the uh, GH4 went down to 48%. So pretty much um, uh, aftermarket batteries on the GoPro, not really that big of a difference. So, um, but uh, regardless, surprise that Numoa and um, Wasabi battery, or Wasabi power are very close to the bottom. Um, I would probably avoid those for, at the very least, the GoPros. DBK was there at the top, uh, another company that I have just not heard of before. And I must say, though, that they're actually their <laughs> packaging of the battery was probably the nicest. So um, it's kind of nice to see that it not only looked the nicest, but also performed the nicest. It's like a plasticky sort of wrap that it has instead of the more papery type that the others have. But um, yeah, that was this test. Uh, that, again, a little bit disappointing for me because I was really hoping to tell you, okay, let's go with Wasabi from now on. But I can't do that now. And also, um, well, we can just avoid DTSE. <laughs> I mean, they don't do very good. Uh, and then uh, if you see DBK, why don't you just give them a shot again because they did great. So um, that was it. That was the GoPro Hero 4 aftermarket test. Just to talk a little bit uh, quicker about batteries. Um, so what I would get as a definite must-have accessory for the GoPro Hero 4 is the battery backpack. Uh, that is kind of one of my favorite accessories for these things. I use it not only for, um, for my aerial filming and for just general work, but I also use it like as a dash cam and I just do not go out without an extra backpack. Uh, I did a test again and I got one minute or one hour, eight minutes without it and then I got two hours and three minutes with it. So it's close to about, what, 55 minutes, one hour. The, uh, battery backpack will buy you. I'm a bit disappointed by how they did the battery on the Hero 4, I must say. It comes out of the bottom. And I'm sure they have their reasons for doing that, but the downside to that is, first of all, if you're like in a frame, if you're using the frame like I am, you have to take it out of the frame to remove the battery. And also one thing that was really cool about the Hero 3 is it just pulled right out of the back. So actually there were some aftermarket batteries that were basically backpacks plus a built-in battery strapped together. And, um, and you can just kind of put them both in at the same time. So, um, and then you could just swap out batteries a lot quicker than this thing. So um, I'm sure they have the reasons for doing that. And it gave uh, a lot of other options for aftermarket batteries. But uh, in the lieu of not having that, definitely pick up the uh, normal battery backup. And then also for longer projects where I just need a lot of power, I'll just use one of these USB external powering devices and um, plug it in and this thing will run it all day. So um, yep, that's your option if you need more than an hour and five-ish five -ish minutes. So that is the battery section of this test. By the way, um, as you can see, I've got a ton of GoPro Hero 4 batteries here that I'm going to be giving away on uh, my Facebook page. So head over to facebook.com slash willyoudesign uh, like the page and find the post about this giveaway in about, and starting in about a week I'm going to start giving away just a battery um, to a few people. Five or I'm probably like six or seven or eight people. So make sure you head over to Facebook and do that now. Otherwise while I had the GoPro Hero 4 and was in test mode I thought I would figure out a little bit more about it and uh, figure out some of the shooting modes too and mainly figure out how much video I can fit in the various modes um, on a 128 gigabyte card. Um, the GoPro has probably hundreds of possible configurations that you can do uh, with this thing in terms of all the resolutions and all the frame rates and all the narrow, wide, and medium modes and ProTune on and off. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of understand kind of how the camera works a little bit more and its limitations there. Uh, so basically I filled up a number of 128 gigabyte cards, actually probably a good few dozen tests. Some of the more popular modes, I didn't include every single one because I, like, I would never really shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second. I don't understand why you would, especially in wide, I mean, at least in wide mode, because I would just shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second and then downscale. Even, I, even if it was in medium or narrow mode, I would still shoot in 4K and then just punch in on it um, in post. So some of them are a bit redundant to me and there's no real reason to use them, but um, there's a lot of other modes that just, there's some, some modes you'd want to use in different reasons, so, or in different conditions. So uh, first of all, uh, going to ProTune, one thing that I've read about ProTune is it increases the bit rate, which isn't quite true. It's only half true. Basically, ProTune increases the bit rate for the lower modes. So like 720p and 1080p, if you turn ProTune off, um, basically I advise shooting with ProTune on all the time. It's great for color grading, that's what it's for. Um, and it gives you that flat picture profile that you can set up to. 
um, which is really important even if the bit rate isn't increased. But um, in the lower modes like 720p or 1080p, if you turn ProTune off, you will be able to record a lot more video because the bit rate is increased when you turn it on. So uh, there's that, but in the higher modes, like 4K and 2.7K, the camera is already pretty much being maxed out in terms of its resources. And so if you look at the file lengths for something you shoot uh, in 4K at, with ProTune on and off, you're gonna end up with the same amount of uh, time on your cards. So uh, the flat picture profile does a lot though, so it's not like it doesn't change anything, it doesn't increase the quality. Um, definitely shoot um, in ProTune regardless at those higher modes, um, unless you, well no, just always shoot in ProTune regardless in those higher modes. But if you really want to include a lot of video, uh, like for instance in the 720p or the 1080p modes, you can maybe turn that off to get some more data on the card. So uh, that's one thing. Another thing I wanted to test was narrow, medium, and wide. No difference there, for instance, on 1080p, um, recording in narrow, medium, and wide at the same rate gives me the same thing. Uh, with just the changed field of view. So that doesn't affect anything. And then finally, 24 frames per second versus 30 frames per second, no difference there. But when you start moving into the higher frames per second, uh, it does take a little bit more data to record 48 frames per second and then 60 frames per second and then 120 or 80. So um, that was that. And so I'm gonna throw up a few of my favorite modes here on the screen. So you can see 4K and 4KS there at the top with four hours and 39 minutes. Uh, a video that you can fit on a 128 gigabyte card. And then we're followed by 2.7K at 24 and 30 frames per second at six hours and 10 minutes. And then for 48 frames per second and 60 frames per second, we're back at four hours and 40 minutes there. And uh, so that's actually a really great one. That's one of my favorites for the Hero 4, um, mainly because in 4K, you can't use the medium mode at all. You're stuck in the wide mode. And uh, if you want the medium mode, which I use for my aerial video mostly, uh, which makes it look a lot better, you can get that 48 frames per second and 60 frames per second as well. So um, in addition to 2.7K, which is great because we're still shooting for 1080p, at least I am, um, and so you have a little, little bit of room to play with, and you also get a higher frame rate, which is great. Uh, that's the trade-off that you don't get in 4K. You can't get 4K at 60 frames per second. So then we go down to 1440 uh, at 80 frames per second. That gives you four hours and 43 minutes. I don't really use that one. I just thought I would include it because there's a big gap there. 1080p at 24 and 30, just for information, is six hours and 11 minutes. And then 1080 at 120, which is a great mode, is four hours and 43 minutes. 720, 30 is going to be six hours and 10 minutes. I would never really shoot in that, but if you are desperate to get as much video on a card as you possibly can, I would go ahead and use 720, 30 frames per second with ProTune off. You can see the jump there to 13 hours and 38 minutes you can fit on a card. That could be useful for like if you're recording something for security purposes or uh, you just want to get as much time, like you want to do a time lapse. When I do my time lapses, I like to be able to stop the time lapse and go into just video and see smooth motion and video. Um, so the time-lapse mode doesn't really work for me there. So that's a case where you might want to just start recording at 720p at 30 frames per second with ProTune off to just get a really, really, really long time-lapse of smooth video. And that's going to give you 13 hours and 38 minutes on a 128 card, and then you can use one of these things to keep it running for that long. Just one little note, I did have the older firmware on this. This was shot on uh, in last December. It was the one point something firmware. And uh, recently they came up with the 2.0 upgrade, uh, 2.0 firmware upgrade. And that one gives you basically, I did a few more tests and all the information I just gave you is effectively the same uh, with the introduction of some new modes, which are really, really great. That's the 2.7K 60 frames per second mode that that 2.0 update gave you as well as a few others. Uh, but that was great. Like I said, I already told you why I love the 2.7K medium mode. And before I was shooting on 48 and now I have 60, which is a lot better. So uh, really happy about that update. Make sure you grab the 2.0 update for your GoPro Hero 4 if you haven't already. And otherwise, that is going to be it for this video. Make sure you are heading over to facebook.com slash design to sign up to get one of these free GoPro Hero 4 batteries. And otherwise, that is the end of this video, guys. Thanks for watching.